Morning. This is Arnie Waters here at Waters Capital in Boston, Massachusetts. I hope you're having a fantastic day, and I hope you, all of our friends in the Midwest, uh, don't get burned to a crisp by all the horrible, horrible heat. Uh, and what we're looking at today is the concept of portable wealth. Now, this is not very far from the concepts that we normally espouse. But a number of our clients have wondered why high-end real estate in London and other European capitals, as well as the uh, big estates in California, Aspen, and uh, Palm Beach, have continued to sell amidst all this global difficulty. What we're seeing also in South Florida is a tremendous influx of fear capital. We have a tremendous influx of fear capital. What that means is a lot of people from the Middle East and from countries where there are dictatorships and countries that do a lot of business with countries where they have dictatorships are getting very scared. The pro-democracy, pro-change movements that have risen up uh, have uh, effectively disestablished some of the equivalent of the aristocracy and the nobles. And um, what this means is that people are looking for assets that are highly liquid and safe. So people paying $25 million for an apartment in London or $60 million for uh, 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 an estate in the Hamptons are doing that not just because they think it's a quote-unquote good investment. They're less concerned about the investment than the fact that it gives them a place to go to. Um, and indeed, as you know, at that level, uh, it gives them also something that can be sold, perhaps not for as much money as they put into it, but for some significant amount of money. And if you're terrified about the underclass rising up to get you, it's not a bad idea to have a flat in New York or London or Zurich or Vienna. So we want you to think about that. This also has been a real reason for the increase in diamond prices. Let us recall, diamonds are even tinier and weigh a lot less than gold, and you can easily have two or three million dollars worth of diamonds in a very, very small pouch and carry it in an, in an inconspicuous place and flee. Now, we're not saying that this is a great investment idea, but we're talking to you about how deep the fear is uh, in a lot of the world where there are ruling classes that have propped up despotic uh, or or fake democratic regimes. So we're going to continue to see this trend. I also want you to note that the so-called Egyptian revolution is really turning Egypt back into a military state. Um, and that's just kind of interesting. That's a little sidebar. So are there going to be further uh, insurrection activities in Egypt, or is the military simply going to suppress the whole situation? Now, lastly, I want you to think about rare earths. Now, I have a friend who has got to be the most well-informed person in the entire world. And so he keeps me up on things that I'm missing. And one of the things I missed um, because of reality, and he's the best informed person in the world, is the Japanese have discovered substantial rare earth deposits. The problem is they're 10 to 20,000 feet below the ocean. Now, over the long haul, that's going to be a good thing. Um, but the fact of the matter is we're a long way from being able to mine at uh, 20,000 or 15,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. Looking at uranium, we're seeing stability in uranium prices, uranium contract prices, which means that uranium uh, mines are continuing to make a pile of money. So we want you to look at your uranium stocks as a way of, addition, of adding additional value. And we want to remind you that Molycorp is on schedule and on budget for the delivery of the first new rare earth mine in the United States. This is Arnie Waters, aim for the ice flows, not the open water. Have a great day.